Okay, today we're going to talk about writing the equations of lines given certain characteristics. So in the last class I gave you the equation of a line and I asked you to sketch it. We're going to go the other way. We're going to, yeah. So I'm going to start off basic, start off uh, standard. I'm going to, it might get a little advanced. Um, we'll see how we do. So let's just jump right into it. So instead of, um, so write, the equation of the line if, and then I'm just going to give you some example. First, the slope is 5 and the y-intercept is 7. So the first thing you do when we have the chapter on lines is you write y equals mx plus b. Because we know this is the equation of a line. And so we're lucky though. We have 5 and we have our 7. We're done. The equation of the line whose slope is 5 and whose y intercept is 7 is y equals 5x plus 7. Number 2. Write the equation of the line if the slope is 2 and it passes through the point one six. Okay, now if you think about this, we, once again, we're gonna write y equals mx plus b. What we see here are four variables. Um, the x and the y are variables. Actually, m and b are known as parameters. We're not gonna get into that now, but once again, we have four unknowns. So you know what? I better give you three, three of those four unknowns, and we notice, oh, you know what? I have, I have that. Here's my x. Here's my y. Uh, I have my slope, but I don't have my y-intercept. I need to find my y-intercept. Well, a little algebra, or to use decimals, or your GEC, six equals two plus b. B equals four. Answer. Answer y equals 2x plus 4. Next, write the equation of the line. Number 3, write the equation of the line if it passes through the points 3, 8 and 5, 4. Now the first question is, do we have a unique line? And the answer is yes, because one of the theorems was given two points, there's only one line that passes through. So you write down y equals mx plus b, and you say, well, I have an x and y, I don't have an m and I don't have a b. Well, is there, well, given two points, I can find my m, my slope. So first, find the slope. Well, we know the slope is change in y over change in x. We now have the slope. So the question is, what point do I use? Well, you'll discover right now that you can use both. So I'd like you to plug in, use both numbers. Um, I'm going to do it with you. So in the first case, we're going to use three eighths and a slope of six, negative six. And if I plug it in, it's let's see, y equals mx plus b, h equals negative six times three plus b, h equals negative 18 plus b, b equals 26. Let's see if I get the same y-intercept by using the other point. So let's see, five, four, and a slope of negative six, so once again, y equals mx plus b, negative 4 equals 5 times negative 6 plus b, negative 4 equals negative 30 plus b. If it's negative on the right, it's going to be a positive on the left. 30 minus 4 is 26. Nice. So the answer 
is y equals negative 6x plus 26. Now, if I had you in class right now, I'd give you some examples too, but um, yeah, so you know what? I'm going to write some examples down, and why don't you try this on your own? One, so let's see, um, 1a, how about the slope is negative 3, and the y-intercept is 8. 1b, um, the slope is, how about we do fractions? Are we, are we afraid of fractions? How about 1 half, and it passes through 8, 4. No, not 4. Let's make it 7. And for 1c, how about um, 1, 6, and 2, 9. Okay, why don't you pause it, and then when you come back, well, I'll work on this right now. So let's see, for number, so pause the video, I'm, but when you turn it on, I'm gonna start to solve these problems. So let's see, um, for 1a, we have, we have y equals negative 3x plus 8. For 1b, we have 7 equals 1 half times 8 plus b, 7 equals 4 plus b, b equals 3, so the answer is y equals 1 half x plus 3. You should write y equals mx plus b, I'm sorry. And then for 1c, right, 1c, we have y equals mx plus b. The slope is going to be 9 minus 6 over 2 minus 1, which is 3. So we have, I'm going to pick 1, 6, 2, 6 equals 3 times 1 plus b, 6 equals 3 plus b, b equals 3, answer, y equals 3x plus 3. Did you get them correct? Good, let's move on. Um, if two lines are parallel, I'm going to write it henceforth using these two slashes. Did I press start? Yes. If two lines are parallel, then their slopes are equal. Question number four. Um, write the equation of the line parallel to y equals 3x minus 4, which passes through um, 1 eighth. Now, if you put a Desmos and you try type in, if you put a Desmos and you type in y equals 3x plus b, you'll see that all these lines are parallel, they go up and down. But the idea is that only one of them passes through 1 8. So we know because it's parallel, the slope of the new line is 3. Right? So we have y equals 3x plus b. We have our 1 8. We have, I'm oh, sorry, we have our point 1 8. So we have 8 is equal to 3 times 1 plus b. 8 is equal to 3 plus b. b equals 5. Final answer, y equals 3x plus 5. Okay, so that's parallel lines. The next thing we need to talk about is perpendicular lines. If two lines are perpendicular, the product of their slopes is negative 1. If two lines are perpendicular, perpendic, perpendicular, 
What does perpendicular mean? Who recalls that from last year? Yes, it's two lines that meet at 90 degrees. Two lines that, sorry, that meet at 90 degrees, or two lines that create right angles. Well, for, we're, we're dealing with the algebra, the arithmetic. So if two lines are perpendicular, the product of their slopes is negative 1. So how do we, so obviously we know what type of question is coming. I'm going to say this line is perpendicular to this, and it passes through that. How do we find the equation of the line? So how do I find the, the new slope? Well, it's really easy. Um, so if the slope of line M, line L, is, let's just use an example, is 2 thirds, right? Then the perpendicular slope does everyone see the symbol that I use for perpendicular? Is what you're going to do is flip it and negate. Negative 3 over 2. Flip it and negate. So, question. Write the equation. Let's see, what, where are we? 5. Write the equation of the. So, for, um, let me ask you. Um, what is the slope perpendicular to y equals um, one half x plus three? So you're like, okay, take the slope, flip it, and negate. That's it. Um, how about what? What is this, what is the slope perpendicular to y equals three x minus one? What is the slope perpendicular to y equals three x plus one? You say, okay, Mr. Al, that's fine. The original slope is three. Flip it. Negate. And you can actually see this in Desmos. If you go to Desmos and your first line is y equals a over bx plus, I don't know, 5, and then the second equation is y equals negative b over ax plus 2. If you put your a and b like on like, you know, like where it's just going crazy, these lines will always be perpendicular always perpendicular. Okay, let's do a problem. Let's do a problem. Um, write the equation of the line um, perpendicular to y equals um, two-fifths, no, 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 two x plus one, that passes through, um, what do I have here, 4, 7. Okay, so you take, take, take some seconds to think about this. Okay, so I know I have y equals mx plus b. Always, once again, the second you write the equation of a line, Get that down, just look at it, and say, what do I need? Okay, well, I have a point. Can I get a slope? Yeah. So the, old, the, the slope is 2, so that means the perpendicular slope is negative 1 half. So we, ha so we have the slope, and we have the point. 7 is equal to 4, uh, negative 1 half times 4 plus b, in using your calculator, or you know, half of 4 is 2, but negative 
7 is negative 2 plus b, b equals 9, y equals negative 1 half x plus 9. Um, should I do it in vast one? I think I will. This is no, I call this fraction madness. You actually can do it in your GDC. Um, let's just do one with, with fraction madness. Let's do one with fraction madness. How about this? Um, seven. So this is advanced. And I call it fraction madness. Um, write the equation on the line perpendicular to y equals 2 fifths x plus 5 that passes through um, 7 6. Once again, if you don't want to do fraction madness, actually everyone should do it because you, everyone has a calculator for this. So first of all, I know it's the equation of a line. I have an old slope. How am I going to find the new slope? Well, you know what? It's perpendicular. Two fifths, flip it, and negate. So I have, I have my new slope, and it passes through seven sixths. So I have seven, uh, six equals negative five over two times seven plus b. Well, it's six equals negative 35 over two plus b. You can turn this into decimals or you can turn the six into a fraction and then just add 35 over two to both sides and I have 47 over two equals b. Final answer is y equals negative 5 over 2x plus 47 over 2. Let's move on. Um, there's other forms of the line. Other forms of the line. Of the equation of the now, if I give you, well, we, we studied the second form. We actually studied this ax plus by plus c, it equals c. We know this is a line, and sometimes we decide to solve for it, put it in y equals mx plus b form, and then other times we were like, you know what, we're going to leave it like this because it makes our lives a little easier. Now, another reason, um, we write equations like this is because we don't like fractions. We're not a big fan of fraction. And so writing it in, this is known as general form. General form. I'm not gonna necessarily make you write this, but I want you to recognize that it might show up like this, and I want you to say, you know what, x is alone, y is alone, I have a line. Um, and this, well, actually, this action, so let's, Take a look at this equation here. The idea here is, first of all, get everything out of the denominator. So get everything out of the denominator. De 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 sorry, denominator. Nature. Okay, so that means I would multiply everything by two. If I multiply everything by two, right? If I multiply every term by two, I have two y is equal to negative five x plus 47, and then in the last step, move all the x's and y's to the same side. Why would you do this? Maybe you don't have it on your typewriter like fractions or something, but you know, it's 2020, you can easily create fractions. 
it's just how it looks. Or I want to, you know, I want to graph by uh, I'm interested in the intercepts. Sorry, my computer went down. The last step is not is known as point slope. The last method is known as point slope. And the idea behind point slope is that given any point on the line and the slope, I can write the equa a unique equation of the line. If you think about it, um, this allows me to not have to deal with the y-intercept. Um, you know, all your years of math dealing with lines has always been like, what's the y-intercept? What's the y-intercept? But you know what? You don't need, always need the y-intercept. So on a line, Given a, given a slope and any point on the line, you can write the equation of a line. Once again, I don't have to manipulate it and get back, get back to like the y-intercept. So the idea is, Let's take a look at this example. So let's say I tell you there's a line, right? I tell you that 0.53 is on the line. And I'm telling you that this line has a slope of two. Well, we saw that between any two points on this line, the slope is always constant. So the idea is I can simply say y minus three over x minus 5 is always equal to 2. Multiply both sides by x, equal, by x minus 5, because I hate the denominator. Right? Multiply by x minus 5. Multiply by x minus 5. And you have something weird. It looks like this. It's y minus 3 is equal to 2 times x minus 5. So, so we can generalize. So we can generalize. We can, sorry, gen generalize given a line with points x1, y1, and slope m, we can say the equation of the line is y minus y1 is equal to the slope times x minus x1. And this is really great. Once again, I don't need the y-intercept anymore. I don't care. I just need a point and the slope. We're going to see this is really important when we do vectors in a couple of years. So it's a faster way to write a line, and it's easy to convert to uh, slope intercept, what y equals mx plus b. So let's take a look at this. So yeah, so let's take a look at this. So we had the point was 3, 5. Let's pick another one. So the point is, I don't know, 2, 6, and the slope is 9. So you're like, OK y equals 6, y minus 6 is equal to 9 times x minus 2. That's it. You're done. That's, that's efficient. And it's easy to convert into slope intercept. Um, y, it's, let's see, it's easy to convert into y equals mx plus b. This is known as slope intercept. This is known as slope intercepts. This is known as point intercepts. Point slope, sorry. This method is known as point slope. And then let's see, I can just do 9x minus 18 plus 6, y equals 9x minus 12 if I need to do that. Um, 
That's it. I'll put some homework up. Uh, good.